Hello everyone, so today's job, we're starting uh, the internal works on this bungalow. I put a roof on it, um, you can check out that little video I did here, it's just a bit of time lapse, uh, nothing particularly detailed. A few little jobs we've got to do first, just to finish off the roof is fix down the, I can just show you them here, um, we've got the wall plate straps to fix down, obviously these hook onto the wall plate which the trusses are fixed to and then we fix these down into the block work, so I've got to do those all the way round. Um, the labour builder very kindly has got all my timber which is over there i've set up next to it near a window so i can the, the lights a bit better um i've got my plan which is here so this is pretty much the extent of the plan for me now what i've done with this lovely bosch laser level is i've double checked the actual size of the internal structure from this wall to this wall and then across from this wall to that wall so i'll know that it should be pretty much exactly the same size as what's on this drawing. This drawing is at a scale, I think, of 1 to 100, so um, I can pretty much just scale off that. Um, so I've got some 100mm DPC here, which basically goes underneath the bottom plate, which goes on the concrete. The concrete is actually uh, within the um, damp membrane, which you can just see poking up the wall there. So technically there's no damp here, but Builder Control like to see it on there to stop any residual damp coming up, which there just isn't, but they like to see it. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got everything. I've got a new saw blade here to go into my saw over there. So that's always nice to have a new saw on the go. So um, maybe the only kind of challenge that I'm going to have today, really working on your own, because normally there's a um, the builder or labourer is about, um, probably just things like holding the chalk line from one end to the other. So I'll either get my transformer out of the van, which is nice and heavy, and put that on it, or maybe try and um, hammer in um, like a masonry now. But anyway, I'm going to have a little look at the plans. I'm sorry, I should have said the first thing when I'm doing my stud work really is what I try and look for is like a dominant wall. And looking here, I can see here that this wall here is probably going to be my dominant wall. Look, it goes all the way through there, set of doors there across here another set of door uh, another door there so what i'll probably do is is get that that one in first um, and then maybe pull this line square to it but what i'll probably do with this one is pull it the full width of the building so that will give me a kind of reference point so uh, then i can measure sort of all of these these walls and all of this stuff i can double check off it to make sure it's nice and square because what we don't obviously want we've got uh, we've got a kitchen here and I suspect there'll probably be like a laminate flooring or something coming through here. You want to make sure that all your walls are square to each other, because certainly in the kitchen, you know, if that's got tiles on it, um, your tiles will show up if your, um, your walls aren't square. I know it sounds simple, but um, this building is pretty square, but it's always good to double check. So anyway, less waffling, more working. <laughs> So I just wanted to show you, I've got some quite big measurements uh, across here. It's five metres, this wall that runs down the middle here is five metres from one side to the other. Quite difficult to set out on your own because these, uh, this 25mm uh, Celotex bumps up at the corner, so um, it's, you've got to lip the tape on top of it and then measure away. So this laser is really handy for this. If you can see, if you maybe can just see the dot down there. Uh, let's zoom it in, see if you can see it. So you can see that dot there, look, that's sitting above that, uh, that inch Celotex that's sticking down. And then what it's doing, oh, let's go back here, is uh, obviously firing a measurement back. Now we want five meters. Now what 
This uh, laser is quite clever because it's got like a constant measuring feature. So that's exactly, you can see it's flashing there. That's exactly five meters. So I just slide it in and out. Look, I've put a mark there. You just slide it in and out. And obviously it's a, it's a live reading. So I just slide it back until I get my five meters and make my mark. So yeah, really handy for that. Saves a lot of faffing around, trying to hook your tape up over this nip here. Normally if there was someone here, I'd just get them to hold the tape. But brilliant bit of kit. So I've got my two lines in here. Uh, this, uh, th although this line going up this way is a datum line and this line going up this way is a datum line, it's a bit faint there. Um, there's actually a wall that goes up to this line and a wall that goes up to this line. I think it's got a doorway and stuff in there. So I can actually make a start now, pulling this wall through, marking out where the doorways are. Um, and then I'll do that wall down there. And then we've got plenty of, as I said, we've got a nice datum points to measure all these other walls off. So let's start cutting some wood and fixing some stuff down. So I've stapled the DPC onto the bottom of the bottom plate. I do it flush with one side, uh, then I can still see my line. And then I'll just fix this down maybe every two foot or so, 600. Um, all I'm using here is pretty much uh, six mil SDS drill bit with a red plug. And I think that's a five by 70 screw. Um, it's a plenty good enough fixing for me. Um, people have asked me in previous videos when I've shown this, why don't I use concrete screws? I'm not a big fan of concrete screws because um, what I tend to find is the screw portion of the screw grips the wood the same way as it grips the concrete. So if there's any gap between the timber and the concrete, it maintains that gap rather than pulling it down. So that's why I don't like them. And maybe I'm using them wrong, but um, plugs and screws I really like because um, you can use plugs and screws in all different types of fixing situations. So that's my first one down. Uh, Got to mark a doorway through there. Get the next bit of stud uh, plate down there and then I can put this piece in here and probably what I'm going to do is uh, just by way of sort of my process is I'll get all of the floor plates down first then I'll fire a laser line up onto the ceiling cords here and then get all my top plates in and then um, obviously I can mark out my 400 centers and where my doors are and everything and then just infill with studs I have to double check what the ceiling height is here because I think it might be slightly over 2.4 meters. Uh, my studs come in at 2.4, so I may have to put a, a double plate on the bottom, but I'll get all of the plates in first. So what I'll do once I'm happy that all of these in where they should be is I just quickly nip round. I've got this little sort of two foot 
fold out square and all I'll do is just a little way of checking yourself. I'll just go and check a few corners and just make sure that it's square because what you'll tend to find is if you've got something really badly wrong or you've got you've gone to the wrong side of the line somewhere that it will show up. So it's worth just just nipping around a few of these corners that and just making sure that they're square. Also, if I'd have got this on the wrong side of the line, that would be miles out of square. So it's just a way of, you know, just because we all make mistakes, um, you know, it's just, it just keeps you, keeps you on track and you know if everything's square, you must be somewhere near, even if you've got a measurement wrong, um, at least it's all square. So it's just a, I tend to like to double check and triple check because you don't want to have to start altering stuff once you put studs and everything on. So there's a time to check and then there's a time when it's too late. Right, so that's all down. Took longer than I thought, which seems to happen most of the time for me now. Uh, maybe I'm getting a bit older and maybe I did one too many laps on my mountain bike at the weekend and a bit tired. So it's all gone okay. I made a couple of mistakes, which I'll show you. Um, nothing major, really. Uh, what do we have? This, there's a cupboard here and it's got a little nib on this end. And while I was planning it out, I sort of doubled the nib on that side, but it isn't a nib. The wall just returns straight round. So not a big deal. I've just put another fixing and I'll cut that off. Um, what else? So we had made a bit of a mistake over here. Uh, this is a little utility room, a back door here. And basically what I tr tried to do is made sure I had 600 from the door reveal um, back to the wall, which I did. And as you can see, that was my first line down there. Uh, and then the, there's a measurement on the plan that the utility's got to be wide. I think it's 1.8 from that wall to this one, which I did uh, made it so it fitted around that door. But then as I got further up this way, it, st it stopped working to the plan. Um, and then what I've actually done, and I should have done to start with, I double checked this doorway and this doorway is not in with the plan. So I think it's about 150 mil out uh, of the drawing. So not a big deal. I've just, I've just moved the walls to where they really should be relative to the pad and the drawing rather than the doorway. Um, doesn't really matter. There should have been a bit of a bigger nib uh, behind this door here, but basically as long as when that, that door's opening in, as long as when that door opens in, there's somewhere for the handle to sort of accommodate so the handle doesn't hit the door. Sorry, so the handle doesn't hit the wall and the door can open at 90 degrees because there's nothing worse if that wall was flush with that reveal. The handle would hold the door off the wall. so. So yeah, this is just a bit, it's just a bit wider here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all gone well. I think when we look at the plan, so if I, I've got the plan here, look. Um, so if we look at the plan here, we sort of walk in the main entrance way and then we've got um, the hallways up here. We've got a downstairs toilet uh, to the right here. Then we've got a nice big cupboard there double set of doors into, this is the main lounge area, which is absolutely massive. I think that's, I think that's over five meters wide and about five and a half six meters long so that's really big that's a great room uh, then into uh, a bedroom here so you walk into this bedroom there and then back round this is all it's only a two bed of this and um, although it's a really big shell um, it's being built specifically for someone and they only want two bedrooms so um, keep the one thing that we found really important on bungalows like this although it looks fairly airy and open at the minute um, we've got quite a wide entranceway hallway here. What we found in the past, if you try and squeeze them down too much, when you walk in here, initially it can seem like you're walking into a tunnel. So um, we widen these out a little bit and it just makes it feel a little bit more spacious when you walk in. Not particularly an issue on this bungalow, as I said, because it's been built for someone. But if you're trying to market a bungalow, the last thing you want to do is people walk in the front door and feel like they're, they're hemmed in. So uh, yeah, we walk down here and then across to the right hand side here. There's like a, 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 a little bit of a hallway, and then we've got a massive cupboard with the double door on here. This is where all the heating manifold and heating system is going to go, so that's going to be nice and big. Through onto this back bedroom here, again, this is a really good size. I think that's like 4.8 metres by 3.2 metres. Uh, back out here, through to here, is uh, the main bathroom, which again is really, really big. Um, and then through this door here, we'll be into where the kitchen is. So the kitchen's absolutely massive, five meters from there to there. I think six and a bit meters from here to here. Um, and again, just with this little bit of um, utility on the back here. So there's a door here and walk out the back. There'll be cupboards all down the side here. Walk out the back. Um, all these doors will be two foot nines. What we'll probably do is put a glazed or half panel 
glazed door in here, maybe even a half glazed door in here, because as I said, um, all of these other doors around here will all be bedroom doors. Um, maybe this double set might be glazed as well, and that lets as much light as possible into this hallway. So, um, stud work's one of my favourite bits, but one of my least favourite parts of my favourite bit, which is stud work, is putting these plates down. Now they're all down, it's uh, all I'll do, as I said earlier, get my level, fire the line up onto the um, ceiling cords, and we can start running those head plates in. A lot less work putting the head plates in, because obviously we don't have to worry about breaking it for the door, so they're a lot straighter. Um, just got to put noggins in to take the, um, the plates that run with the, in the same direction as the uh, ceiling cords and um, obviously the ones that go at 90 degrees will just now straight across obviously where they terminate we'll have to put noggins in to catch a plasterboard but yeah hopefully um, crack on the rest of the afternoon it's nearly lunchtime now crack on the rest of the afternoon get all these head plates in and then it really is a simple case of just infilling with studs which should be fast and enjoyable. So as I said, got plenty of noggins to put in uh, in this ceiling to take the head plates, and um, I've got a nice shiny serviced uh, nail gun. This had a complete strip down and lube last night. Um, it started to play up yesterday, and I did a little field strip and clean. You can see that video I did here. Um, all I needed was a bit of um, carb cleaner or brake cleaner on some lube. It blasted out the worst of the dirt, but it's only a temporary um, solution for me really uh, just keeps you going for the rest of the day and then when I got home as I said full strip down and clean so this one is going to be flawless now for a few more thousand nails so let's get on and get some of these noggins cracked in. I'm fixing up my head plates here and I thought it just quickly worth a mention. Um, when I fix the noggins, when I fix uh, these noggins at 600 into the uh, ceiling cord, I use a 90 mil nail. But now when I fix this head plate up through these noggins, I'm going to change to a 63 mil nail, purely because I've just done a quick mock up here. You can see that that 90 mil nail sticks through, what that's sort of 20, 20 mil there. And what I wouldn't want is, I know that there shouldn't be many people up here, but what you don't want is a nail sticking out up there and someone's up there maybe insulating or something like that. And they put their knee down on that nail. It's not very nice at all. So I just swap back to the 63s and then no nails will poke out. Just a small thing, but obviously you're the poor fella that's got to go up in the ceiling and you, uh, sorry, in the loft space and you tread on one of those, it's not very pleasurable, is it? So I suppose you could leave 90s and clench them all over, that's a lot of work. So, uh, yep, change those nails, get these head plates up. Right, so that's all of these head plates up now. I'll just put a couple of those little noggins here and there just to make sure that all the plasterboard and internal and external corners on the ceiling gets caught up. Um, as I said, all of these sort of intermediate noggins through here, they're all at 600, so should be something on the end of each bit of plasterboard. If there isn't for any reason, I'll have a quick walk around with the tackers who are absolutely fantastic lads, and uh, I can stick a little noggin in for them, no problem. I'm happy to help them out. So, uh, floor plates are down and all the head plates are in now, so the next job I'm going to do is go around and fix all my studs that fix the external wall, fix them top and bottom and then um, fix them to the block work and then I can start measuring out 400s and start filling in my studs. So we're cracking on. So I've got the stud that goes against the wall and I know I've shown this before but what I do is fix it with these. These are uh, M10 by 100mm Fisher style fixings. These are actual Fisher fixings which I get on really well with. Just a giant nylon plug with a big fat screw. So. Um, I've marked, uh, I've drilled it in three positions, one in the middle, and then I go sort of two thirds of the way up from there, up and two thirds of the way down. First thing I'll do is do a nice clearance hole through the timber with a 10mm auger bit, then I'm going to pump it through 
with a 10 mil SDS, although these blocks are quite soft, don't really need an SDS, but it saves me uh, changing the drill bit around. And then I don't use the impact driver for these fixings, I use a normal drill. This one's got lots of power, three speeds, put it in the lowest speed. I like to be able to feel the fixing uh, when these start to, to bite up. Um, the impact drivers are so powerful that they can actually um, strip these threads out. So in these lightweight blocks, it's a really good idea, uh, as far as I'm concerned, to use a drill. Then you can feel when, the, when you're at the maximum torque of the screw and you don't over tighten it and strip the threads out. Because again, because these blocks are soft, this can sort of, you can over tighten these. So let's get that drilled and get these fixed. See, because I've pre-drilled the timber with that auger bit, uh, these sleeves don't bind when I put them in. I put the, uh, I separate and put the plug bit in first, and then put the screw in afterwards. And now, shoot this in a simple case, wind them in with the screwdriver. Oh. <laughs> Super powerful fixing, how much turn them out, and now I can move on to the next one.
Right, you see, I just cracked on there, had a sort of mad few hours, I don't know what it was, maybe between sort of my morning break and my lunch break, um, managed to get all of these studs in here. So the issue I've got, um, which is why I've stopped now, is I'm running out of studs. I've only got, I've got some here, these, uh, you may have seen me throughout the video rejecting some or going to cut a stud and then, you know, putting it down. That's because these are quite badly bent. I've got another five down there. Now, basically, those five studs, I could use those up in sort of five minutes, couldn't I, along here. So what I'm going to do, um, because it's only just after lunchtime, what I'm going to do instead with uh, these uh, lengths of stud over here is start putting all the he door heads through and then I shall start putting noggins through because that's a little bit more time consuming. So that'll better use the rest of the time I've got today, um, obviously doing that than just blasting them in the studs, like I said. So um, I know what the floor uh, level is. There's a, I think there's a small screed to go on here. And then I know what my internal structural opening is going to be. Um, in my case, from memory, it's two meters and 30 millimeters, um, which I think is about 80 inches, I think. I'll have to double check that. But um, once I know where my floor level is, I'll set my laser level up. Laser level up. I can't get my words out. Um, fire a line all the way around there. Put all those heads in, and then cut my world famous uh, noggin stick and start cutting some noggins in. So we're getting on really well. Um, had a better, much better day today than I had yesterday. Just couldn't really get going. I don't. I don't know why. I just have those days sometimes. But um, we're pulling it back today. So I've set the level up, and what it's um, what it's done is managed to fire a lovely laser line. I think we can see here's my date and point I put in. Um, so it's managed. We can fire a line onto all of these openings. I've got it in such a position where we, I think we can get just about all of them, look, all over here, uh, onto here, onto bathroom, and right back into this back bedroom, and even onto this cupboard here. So I think I've said it many times before, and in the words of my mate from Build With Any, Tony, it's a game changer. Um, these really are fantastic bits of kit, and uh, you know, kind of be lost without one. I think I've said before, I upgraded to this one's got the little, um, 12 volt rechargeable battery on and I can pretty much don't have to worry about switching it on and off like I did my old one which took three double A's can pretty much leave this one on all day so uh, yeah absolutely brilliant I'll square all those along now and I can get those heads in So uh, I got the studs that I needed, that's the last of those just blasted in. Uh, I'm going to be quite quick now because I'm conscious the video might be getting a bit too long. Yeah, just going to finish off the rest of these noggins, or as I've been informed by a couple of my commenters, uh, John Mackay and Paul McGeoch, um, they are my friends in the north from uh, Scotland, uh, that these are called Dwangs in Scotland. So the, the beauty of YouTube is I get to uh, um, reach out to all these different people and they can reach out back to me and tell me you know how they do things and what things are called in different parts of the world. So thanks ever so much for that. Um, set the camera back up, get the rest of these dwangs in and we should be looking at getting this job wrapped up.
so that's me done. Uh, I'm not going to waffle on too much more because I'm quite conscious that this video is quite long. If you've stuck it right out to the end, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you'll see there's a couple of other bits and bobs I did. There's some noggins here which are for the kitchen cabinet wall units uh, fixing points um, and there's some little extra bits of noggin I put um, above the door heads just to take the plasterboard there. All my noggins are in, sorry, all my dwangs are in. Um, I'm really happy with the whole, how the whole job has gone. Really like stud work, as I said. Um, not fantastically detail heavy on this one. There's other videos on my channel that you can check out if you like that I go into more detail. But as I said earlier, I have got um, some more detailed, specific areas of stud work that I'm going to video uh, in the future. So, once again, thanks for watching.